Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2024 presidential election between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, and we're going to be basing off the map off the popular vote nationwide. And as of right now, Kamala Harris is beating Donald Trump nationally uh, by 2.7 percentage points. She's pulling out exactly 46% to Donald Trump's 43.3%, and the independent or third party candidate RFK is pulling at roughly almost 5 percentage points, so he is actually losing support overall. But before we get started with the map, based off the popular vote only, make sure you guys are subscribed, click the bell so you don't miss out on my content, press like button, give this video a thumbs up. Also, we have memberships before our interested. You can find a link to that in the description section. Now, back to the topic of today's video. I'm going to be filling out this electoral map. Uh, if Kamala Harris does end up winning the popular vote on election day, if this is the real numbers, by 2.7 percentage points. If she were to win it by 2.7, how this electoral map to 270 electoral votes would pan out. So let's start off with the likely states moving into the safe states for both these candidates. I do think Iowa is now moving into the solid red column. A uh, majority of polls has Donald Trump winning this state by double digits over 10 percentage points. So this state is now solid red. I also do think that Colorado is now solid blue. It is no longer likely uh, for Kamala Harris. I do think uh, this is comfortable for her. She'd probably win this state on election day by 10 percent if the popular vote was 2.7 percent in her favor. I also do think that Tim Walls would uh, help uh, in the state of Colorado. Democrats actually keep gaining in terms of new voters. This state is getting bluer. And as for the likely states for both of these candidates, I do think Ohio, uh, Florida, and Texas, those three states are now likely for Donald Trump, or they actually remain likely, uh, regardless if Kamala Harris does win the popular vote by 2.7 or not on election day. As for Ohio, obviously, J.D. Vance is Trump's VP selection, so obviously you have that home state advantage. It's a no-brainer. But as for Florida, this state is shifting towards right. The entirety of the state has you know, totally abandoned the, the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party in Florida is just an utter... Uh, mess, and they don't really have candidates to run in there on this, you know, Senate statewide or governorship as well. Also, Hispanic Americans, specifically Cubans, are really shifting towards right. Miami Dade County flipped from blue to red to DeSantis in the 2022 midterms. And then you have Texas, obviously a border state. So that issue is a losing issue for Kamala Harris. She cannot address immigration as much as Trump does, it's just not going to happen. So, with that being said, Texas is going to be likely for Donald Trump by probably 7 percentage points, even if she were to win the popular vote by 2.7 percent, according to 538. I also do think that Kennedy is taking more votes away from Donald Trump, which is going to benefit Kamala Harris in the long run. And the likely states for Kamala Harris in this scenario, if she were to win the popular vote by 2.7 percent, exactly, is going to be Minnesota is going to be likely for her. I do think because she chose Tim Walls as the VP, obviously you have that electoral home state advantage. So she would probably win Minnesota if the election was held today uh, with this scenario of the popular vote going to her by 2.7 percent by probably eight percentage points. Minnesota is getting bluer, especially the suburbs and Minneapolis. Also, the women vote can really turn out for Kamala Harris. Also. So New Mexico is going to be likely for Kamala Harris. Albuquerque is a Democratic stronghold county. It's really hard for Trump to overcome the votes in there. There's a lot of white liberals. And also Virginia is going to be likely for Kamala Harris. If she were to win the popular vote by 2.7%, she would probably win this state by probably six percentage points if I had to make an estimated guess. And also, I do think New Hampshire is going to be now likely for Kamala Harris because I do think Tim Walls would really help with college-educated voters. Also, New Hampshire is a very college-educated voter state. And with that being said, I do think Kamala Harris would probably perform better than Trump. Um, you know, among that voter uh, group, college-educated voters really do good for Democrats. And now moving on to the lean states for both of these candidates, starting off with Donald Trump. I do think that there are probably just one lean state for Donald Trump. If this scenario were to play out realistically, she wins the popular vote by 2.7% on election day. North Carolina would be lean for Trump uh, regardless of the popular vote percentage. I do think he'd win this state by probably a couple percentage points, a little bit more than his 2020 margin in this state. North Carolina, believe it or not, is getting redder. Republicans are doing tremendous in terms of new registered voters or voter registration. They are getting new voters. So this state is getting slightly redder. And then you have uh, the lean states for Kamala Harris. I don't think there is any, so we're just going to be moving on to the tilt states. So the tilt states for, I would say, Kamala Harris is going to be Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, 
those three most important rest vote states, that, that's the deciding factor of who wins this election. And Pennsylvania, I do think if she were to win the popular vote by 2.7%, I do think she does carry those three rest vote states. You can argue that Trump can get one of them. I would say possibly Pennsylvania at this current moment because obviously when Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by two percentage points in 2016, Trump carried all of those Rust Belt states. So yes, I do see a reality in which she does win the popular vote by 2.7, but Trump still gets at least one of those Rust Belt states. I do think that is very realistic. So let's start off with Wisconsin. Obviously, you have Tim Walls, who is the governor of Minnesota. That VP pick, I do think that's an electoral advantage. Obviously, Wisconsin borders the state of Minnesota. So I do think Tim Walls does help in that Rust Belt state. He's going to help in the Northeast as well as run up the numbers in Milwaukee. Milwaukee was the main reason why Biden had won the state uh, in 2020. Obviously, it comes down to those 20,000 voters. That's the margin, 0.6% that Biden got it by. And if Kamala Harris is able to do it, because probably mainly Tim Walz is going to you know, carry her over the finish line. And also, she must hang on to Door County. Biden barely won that by under percentage point. That's how close it was. And if Trump is able to run up the numbers in Green Bay, I do think there's a decent shot he can win this state. But as for Michigan, obviously you had a large uncommitted vote. I do think Kamala Harris will be, I would say, slightly nicer to those pro-Palestinian protests than someone like Joe Biden. And especially considering that she did not pick someone like Josh Shapiro as, as her VP. Uh, that's going to help her electorally. And also keep in mind, Michigan was the bluest trust vote state in 2020. It voted to the left of both Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Biden almost won it by three percentage points. So considering that Michigan was the bluest of the three, I do think that she probably has the best shot in this state more than Wisconsin or Pennsylvania. But as for Pennsylvania, I do think if she's able to hold on to Northampton County, Biden won Northampton by 0.7% in 2020, as well as hold on to Erie County. That is crucial for her. She must, as well as run at the numbers in Center County, as well as some of the stronghold Democratic counties like Pittsburgh and the Philadelphia suburbs. The suburbs are really important in this election. That's really what could decide uh, this. And then as far as the tilt states for Donald Trump, I do think uh, if Kamala Harris were to win the popular vote by 2.7%, regardless, Trump is going to still carry Nevada as well as flip Arizona by a tilt margin by probably a percentage point. It's going to be extremely close as well as hold on or actually flip Georgia. And so he's going to get 268 to Kamala Harris's 270. If she were to win the popular vote by 2.7%, I do think she will get exactly 270 electoral votes. It's, it's going to be extremely close. This is going to be an extremely close election. So let's start off with Nevada. I do think Trump is able to flip Washoe County as well as run the numbers in the Vegas area, obviously Clark County with Hispanic voters as well. That would be key to his victory. And I think he can do exactly that. Nevada is a right trendy state. Now, what's the opposite of a red trendy state is Arizona. This state's actually getting bluer. Democrats statewide are doing very good in the state of Arizona. Obviously, they elected Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs in 2022 for the first time since, I believe, like 2009. Also, they have a Democratic senator. So statewide, Arizona is getting bluer, especially in the future. Don't be surprised if they keep electing Democrats up and down the ballot. But this, honestly, is going to come down to Maricopa County. Maricopa is what's going to decide who wins Arizona ultimately at the end of the day. Biden won Maricopa by two percentage points. I do think Trump can flip it, uh, considering the border crisis, the border state. Obviously, immigration is a losing issue for Kamala Harris. She cannot get the messaging out. So, therefore, I think Trump wins Arizona. Obviously, he would have to win over the neocons, the establishment, the rhinos of the Republican Party. A lot of them actually broke for Biden because he was, quote-unquote, moderate in 2020. I do think he would win some of that support back. And uh, last state before we end off the video is going to be Georgia. I do think that Kamala Harris could possibly win it. A lot of polls are suggesting that Trump is going to lose this state. He could very well. But as of right now, if the election is held today, I think he would win it by under a percentage point. It's going to be extremely close by tilt margin. And if she were, were to win the popular vote by 2.7, I do not think that's enough to win a state like Georgia. I think it's one of the more easier flips for Donald Trump, considering that it was the closest state back in 2020. I do think if she were to win the state, she would have to really have high turnout in Atlanta. The metropolitan area, also the suburbs are very important. I just don't think she can do it. So there you guys go. 270 for Harris to Donald Trump's 268. If she were to win the popular vote by 2.7% in this exact scenario. So this is the map. Let me know what states you agree with or disagree with in the comment section down below and why. One last fine reminder is to subscribe as we are approaching 4,000. Click the bell so you don't miss out on my content. Also, if you're interested, we have memberships. You can find a link to that in the description section. That is pretty much it. Thank you, everyone, for watching.